I want to ask you a question. You mentioned patriotism earlier, and obviously you're a very patriotic person, and you should be. I think as ugly as American history can be, it can also be very beautiful and inspirational. And I'm obsessed with history, and I have always um, had an appreciation for American history. But obviously, coming from the Middle East, I was born in Iraq. I was born in, in Baghdad. And um, I still have family there. And I, I went back there before the war. After, I went back a month after the U.S. invasion in 2003. And I've been back several times since. And so I've seen the destruction. I felt it. I have family members that were affected and hurt by it. But I'm also an American. And so I feel more American than anything else. But I am still from the Middle East. I am still Muslim. And so I'm proud and, and grateful to be here. At the same time, I'm aware of every criticism imaginable about the United yeah. States. And I'm sh at this point in your life, I think you are as well, and you've been part of that criticism. So what is it like for you to, or how do you reconcile, I suppose, feeling that patriotism towards your country, your homeland, but also understanding uh, how destructive, you know, the U.S. empire has been and being critical of it? What is that like for you, making sense of that? You know, Again, because my, my father was military, I, uh, I, I just remember growing up, there were two, um, two framed uh, posters on my wall as a child in my bedroom. Um, the first one was um, uh, taken from John F. Kennedy's uh, inaugural address, uh, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country, right there on my wall. And just imagine being a kid from the very beginning, open your eyes, and that's the first thing you see in the morning is John F. Kennedy and those words. That's what you wake up to. That's what you go to pit. And the other one was the, um, the, uh, the, the, the code of conduct. I am an American fighting man, and it was basically, you know, how you behave, um, you know, as a, you know if, if you're taken captive. And that was the other one there. So the whole concept of uh, service to country and honor. Um, but I was also a student of history. One of the first books my parents got me was a history of the American Indian. Um, now today, that of course is a politically incorrect word. We, you know, we refer to you know there's Indigenous Americans or Native Americans or, uh, but you know this was a history of the American Indian, and you read it, and then it causes you to uh, want to read more. Um, and I remember the progression of my books. I ended up reading uh, D. Brown's uh, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee and uh, reading that. And you realize how badly we treated the Native Americans. And as a kid, I realized that. I understood exactly what we had done. I used to love the Battle of the Alamo until I read the history of the formation of Texas and how we actually stole, you know, we're stealing Texas from the Mexicans. And then uh, the the... the the, the, the Mexican War, um, how we stole land. I mean, I approached American history with a full understanding that we were the bad guy most of the time. Um, you know, Andrew Jackson, the Trail of Tears. I knew exactly what was going on with the Trail of Tears. I wasn't, you know, somebody who didn't realize what was being done. And this is as a kid. Um, and then later on when I realized that, you know, people took oaths to the Constitution, you know, I would read that document. Um, and one of the more telling things, when I first read the Constitution and understood it, were, were two things. One, the Constitution allowed slavery. And that just blew my mind. Blew my mind that we, we formed this country on the basis of, sla of slavery. And I went, well, that's not good. But then I read the Constitution. We, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, that means we know we're not perfect, that this is a struggle, this is a work in progress, that we are working to be something, that we have ideas and values that we put down there that we haven't reached that yet. We're, trying, we're striving to get there. It's a journey to improve ourselves, and we made a lot of mistakes on the way. But as long as we learn from those mistakes, this is why I don't reject American history. There's a lot of people out there that want to take down statues, tear down monuments and all that. I'm like, leave them up. Leave them up. 
so that we look at it and we look at it and we say, okay, why is that statue there? What are the circumstances about? We cannot turn our back on American history. We have to embrace it, not because we love it, because we have to learn from it. We have to learn from our mistakes. We are an imperfect nation. We were born imperfectly. We, in, we had slavery. That makes us the most imperfect of nations. Um, you know, we can't speak of, you know, individual liberties when we, when we have such a large population enslaved. But then we went through a very lengthy, imperfect process of freeing the slaves. But we never freed the slaves. We, it was a paper game. We still treated the, you know, African Americans uh, like utter dog dirt. Um, Jim Crow laws, the whole segregation, all that kind of stuff. But we worked at it. We we learned as a uh, as a nation that what we were doing is wrong, and we started to grow a conscience. And so then we started to work on civil liberties. I remember my dad. Uh, we he was in the Air Force. He got sent to a squadron officers course in um, Maxwell Air Force Base, uh, I think in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, we were in Payne Field, Washington State. And at that time, segregation was a real thing. So all I ever saw was white people. Never saw a black person. Suddenly, we're in Montgomery, Alabama. And, you know, my dad was a captain. You don't make that much money. So we're in a part of the city where there's nothing but black people. And I'm going, what the, <laughs> what's black people, you know? And I was playing with black kids. I mean, we, because kids don't care. That's the beauty of being a kid. You don't care. I, there's some curiosity. You know, you come out and you're like, Oh, you're a, you're a black kid. You, can I? Uh, it doesn't come off. I'm, so that's really your skin? Yeah. And you're a white guy. Yeah, I'm a white guy. But you're talking. Yeah, we're cool. Hey, uh, oh look, let's go over there. You know, you start playing, and all that. And I remember um, when we were playing. I remember the the children, the, the the parents of the kids that I was playing with coming over, and they shoot us apart. And they were like, they didn't want their kids playing with me, mm -hmm. um, because they were afraid that my my parents might come in and. And do something. Then they realized my parents were military, mm -hmm. and so we were just playing all that. But I remember one night, um, we were upstairs. My mom was pregnant with my uh, with my youngest sister, and um, it's Alabama. It's hot, and all that. So everybody's you know dressed down. So my dad was in his t-shirt and his underwear, and outside we hear a horrific screaming, and it was a black girl getting mugged by two white guys. And my dad uh, ran downstairs in his bare feet and uh, went. And the two white guys ran away, and he chased them down an alleyway, but there was broken glass, so he's cutting his feet. But he didn't catch them, but they dropped the purse. Mm -hmm. So my dad got the purse and came back, and um, there were two cops there. And my dad came up and um, you know offered the purse, and he said, I'm ready to give a statement. I said, we don't need a statement. He was like, why not? Mm -hmm. And he pulls him over. He said, why'd you help that? And he used the N-word. Mm. My dad said, because she was being mugged. He said, those were white boys. He said, yeah. He goes, you don't ever go against your own kind. And my dad's like, well, yes, you do when she's being mugged mm. and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, the lady was thankful and she left. But, you know, he came up, his feet were bleeding and all that stuff. And he, I just remember him talking to my mom. And we were we were young kids. And she's talking. He's talking to my mom. He's like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the mindset here. The, uh, I mean, that was the first experience with uh, just straight up. And, and and the funny thing is, I mean, my parents would probably kill me, but we were quasi racist. And what I mean by that is, um, we weren't ugly racist, mm. but we were white people who hung out with white people. Right. We didn't a hang out with black people, racism. you know. We 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 inadvertently or whatever were participating in segregation, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't know we were doing it, but we were doing it. Um, but then, when you're confronted with the ugliness of real racism, it's a it's an eye opener. And I and I always remember because my my father, um, his parents were not tolerant of black people. And my, I remember my, my father telling me once, he said, uh, don't look at me when it comes to race and say that's what I want to be. He said, I'm a product of a certain time. And he said, I'm, you know, I'm working on you know, having an open mind, and you'll never hear bad, you know, the N-word. We never heard the N-word. 
but there was a, a standoffishness. And, he, and his thing was, don't be like me. When we moved to Turkey, the military was starting to integrate. And so there were blacks. And I just grew up thinking that um, that, that, that was, because the military, it's a meritocracy. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you either can do the job or you can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're either dark blue or light blue, mm -hmm. you know, in the Air Force, <laughs> but you're blue. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all part of the same team kind of thing. And um, my, you know, my dad commanded black uh, uh, airmen. Uh, there were black officers. There was no problem. Um, and he wanted, he raised us to be colorblind, so to speak. But uh, the fact is, there's horrific, ugly racism uh, in America. America is an imperfect nation because of that to this day. Um, but the, the, again, the, from my father, it was, you need to be better than the generation before you. Mm. A more perfect union. You need to make the country better. It's a generational process. You know, our, our failures of my generation, you have to you know, do better. Mm -hmm. And then your kids have to do better. And that's how we make this country perfect. So for me, patriotism was never blind um, obedience or blind love. Patriotism was a recognition of where we wanted to go and who we wanted to be, but also a recognition that we weren't there and we needed to get there. Mm -hmm. And that anybody who was doing something that impeded this positive progress was the problem. And um, that the government was more often than not the problem. And that the most patriotic thing you could do as an American was to hold the government accountable for what they do in the name. And that was a hard lesson. I, my dad was a, uh, a huge, <laughs> again, I'm giving away some, some things here, but a huge Barry Goldwater fan. Mm. Loved Barry Goldwater. Named our first dog after Barry Goldwater. Um, and um, then later on, he was a big Richard Nixon guy but Watergate I, I just remember Watergate crushed my father crushed him uh, because he just felt betrayed that the, his commander in chief the president of the United States lied he just couldn't get uh, this just didn't calculate mm. and from that moment on um, you know that was a lesson for me because the the lesson that I got was to question authority to uh, you know, never take anything for granted. Um, to to do your own due diligence uh, and to hold people accountable. Uh, that was the lesson of Watergate for me, taught to me by my parents. Um, and so, you know, that's patriotism to me. Patriotism isn't blind allegiance. Patriotism is um, knowing what we're supposed to be, recognizing that we're not that, and doing everything you can to get to where we should be. Mm. That's what makes a patriot. This video is sponsored by you. That's because we don't have any sponsors. All we have are supporters like yourself. So please consider making a contribution to our channel. You can give to us via the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description of this video. That way, we can continue to fly guests like Scott Ritter to our studio for an insightful podcast from which we can all benefit, like the one you're watching right now. So please consider making a contribution. Thank you for your support. Trust nothing. Mm -hmm.